This is Diana Sullivan in Austin, Texas. In 2013, I put up a machine knitting video every single month, and for December, I wanted to put up a little gift item that you could easily make using only a little bit of sock yarn. Good sock wool comes in all kinds of colors, all kinds of brands. Here's a pretty one from my stash. I do use skeined yarn on my knitting machine. This works up fingering weight and I rewind it first into a ball or onto a cone. Now here's the fingerless mitten. Two of these mitts takes less than one 50 gram ball of yarn. In other words, enough yarn to make one sock will make two of these mitts. And these are doubled. I put a long wrist on them because they're nice for cool days when your fingers are cold but you have to hold still, maybe type. And their English rib in the palm of the hand. The thumb is knitted separately. So let's start right out. This is a standard gauge machine, four and a half millimeter gauge, and I'm using 51 needles set up for one by one, that is knit one, purl one ribbing. My rightmost needle is 26 right, my leftmost needle is 25 left, and my end needles are on the main bed. So every other needle's up on the main bed, and then the in-between needles are up on the ribber. And I'm set on full pitch. That's the P setting on my brother. I'm going to put my carriages on the very tightest tension, and everything set for plain knitting so that I can do the cast on. I'll start by doing a zigzag row. Thread the machine and just run from right to left. I like to hang a clothespin on the loose end of the yarn. And I have a short ribber comb that I'm going to put on this knitting. And I'm going to hang two one pound ribber weights on the work one on the left end and one on the right end of the river comb. I switch my carriages to circular knitting and to tension one. And knit my three rows for the typical Japanese circular cast on. Now if you're using a different machine from a brother, just follow your manual for your typical knit one, purl one, cast on. Now I set it over to plain ribbing, tension five, and I put my row counter on zero, zero, zero. I'm going to knit 40 rows for the long wrist area of the mitt. Those 40 rows are from here to here. Once those 40 rows are knitted, I'm right here on the mitt and I'm going to do 40 rows for the palm or the main part of the hand and I'm going to do that 40 rows in English rib, also known as half fisherman's rib. The setting on the brother is just to set the ribber to tuck in one direction. Because the end needles are on the main bed, the ends of the knitting won't be tucked. So they'll be knitted through and that'll work a little better. So now, 40 rows of English rib for the hand part of the glove. When those 40 rows are knitted, it's time for me to switch back to plain ribbing and do eight rows. Those eight rows are the slightly gathered up part that fits over the part of the fingers that's closest to the palm. So I'll do eight rows. Now I'm going to do a loop through a loop bind off. This is a fast, easy bind off. I'm going to set my carriages, both of them, to the very loosest tension. On the main bed, that's bigger than tension 10, and on the ribber, that's a click pass tension 8 on this machine. In addition, 
I pull down the upper yarn a little bit so it'll be loose and feed loosely. And I knit across one row. Now I need to cut the yarn. I like to leave a long enough tail for sewing. I'm going to use a double eye transfer tool and transfer stitches up to the main bed. I'll come right back on camera as soon as I have all my stitches transferred and just show you the bind off. For the loop through loop bind off, once the stitches are all up on the main bed, I'm going to drop my ribber just to move it out of the way. I'll put all of my needles into hold position. And those two pounds of weight are really too much. So I'm going to remove both of them. If a little bit of weight makes you feel more secure, and I'm certainly that way, one of the small weights is plenty, and I'll put it just in the middle. Now I take my latch tool and I do that loop through a loop bind off, catching a hook on the tool. Now going into the second loop, the new loop is inside the hook and the old loop is down below the latch and then I just pull. I like to pull them right off the end of the needles to do the loop through a loop bind off. This is a good looking bind off. It looks like the bind off that hand knitters do. And it's loose enough to give a stretchy edge. To finish the loop through a loop bind off, you have the last loop on the hook and then you just bring the tail through it. That finishes that off. This tail can be used for sewing later on. The thumb is knitted over 25 stitches. I like to go from 13 right to 12 left. On the main bed. Then on the ribber I'll put up the in-between needles. So once again my end needles are up on the main bed and I have the in-between needles down on the ribber. And this is going to seem a lot like what we did with the body. We're going to start by casting on with a zigzag row. Both the main bed and the ribber are set on the tightest tension in plain knitting and I just go one row right to left for my zigzag row. I've hung my comb. I'm going to hang just one small weight in the very center of my short comb and do my three rows of circular cast on. I have the main bed set to slip to the left and the ribber set to slip to the right. If you have a different brand of machine, follow the directions in your manual. Then I set it for plain knitting and up to tension five. I'm actually knitting my thumb from this part first, the tip of the thumb first, and then I'll work on down. According to my notes, I need to knit only four rows of plain ribbing before I begin the English rib. So let's do those four rows. Once those four rows are done, I switch to English rib. Same setting change that you saw before. I'm just going to set my ribber to tuck when I go to the left. In addition to that, I'm going to do a decrease. Every four rows I'm going to decrease on the right and the left, on the main bed and the ribber until I decrease down to nothing. I take the end needle on the main bed and move it over to the next needle and work. That's skipping one. Then I take the end needle on the ribber, double it up onto the next needle in work. That was skipping one. There was an empty in between. I'm going to do this on the left side too. I move in the end needle to the next needle on work and the same on the ribber. And you guessed it. Now I knit four rows. I'm still in English rib and I'm going to do the same thing. Decrease on the right 
top, bottom, decrease on the left, that was the top, and here is the bottom, knit four rows. Do it again. This is a kind of double decrease. I'm taking off four stitches every row, two on each end. Knit four rows. Do my decrease again. too much weight and I think that the weight of the comb will be enough. I only have a few stitches left here. I'll just hold the comb gently with my other hand. Decrease. This gets really small really fast. knit four rows. Now here's the surprising one. I'm going to double these up. This one here, this one here. Then I get my double-eyed needle and I'm going to double these onto it too. So now it has four stitches on it. Now it has five stitches on one needle. And just to help this knit off, I'm going to bring the needle all the way off and I knit two rows. And that, kids, was my bind off. There's no bind off really necessary. When I cut it, it did fall on the floor. This little pointy thing is a thumb. Here's how you're going to assemble it. You're going to lay this out on a table with your mitt Face up, there's a prettier side to the English rib. One side looks plain, the other has a nice little tucked look. Put the pretty side up. Same thing with the thumb, find the prettier side and it goes up. Match up the point on the thumb to right here, the beginning of the English rib on the mitt, and sew the thumb up right on up to the place where it goes into plain ribbing. Then after that's sewed together, You're going to fold this into, into the shape that you would have, and this would have already been sewed on, so this is sitting here, and you're going to mattress stitch up the cuff, and when you get to the thumb, you have to sew the thumb onto the opposite side. Then you'll have something like this. At that point, you need to sew from this end, down to the thumb and then sew this little circle together, sew the thumb along its little short side and your mitten, a fingerless mitten, will be assembled.